we are continuing with uh, the design of general purpose industrial helical gear reaction unit. This is part 3 and the lecture is being developed in the week 5 in week 5 and this uh, lecture is lecture number 24 where we will consider the output shaft, bearing lives etcetera. Now, in this lecture we, I shall cover output shaft sub assembly with loads that we will already developed equivalent loads equilibrium output shaft sub assembly and output shaft force equilibrium then bearing life estimation equivalent load formula we will recapitulate it and loads on left hand bearing and bearing selection and then life estimation of left hand bearing and life estimation of right hand bearing then and um, we will make some comments on output shaft sub assembly and also obviously loading there and then um, applied and resistive loads on output shaft and they are total equilibrium. Now, this already we have developed that what are the force acting on the shaft here it is shown that load acting at the gear contact point and the load offered by the bearings and the direction of rotation no moments are shown here. And we should remember that this is in the plan view it is in x z plane whereas, the axis system is that that means, vertical axis is uh, vertical plane is x y plane. Okay. Now, equivalent loading and equilibrium that we have to consider first. Now, in this slide plan view is in x z plane this half half assembly being viewed from top we are looking from the as if top and then this load, load already we have shown what is the load diagram. Now, this load we are moving shifting toward the axis this is the equivalent plan okay, to find out the equivalent plan. Now, due to that uh, then um, we will find that right hand left hand forces are like that. Now, as we have shifted the load there definitely to total balance for this shaft there will be some moment also acting on that not the bending moment bending moment is different that is acting inside the shaft. Okay. So, here also the direction of rotation of this shaft is shown reaction loads at shaft means loads offered by bearing to shaft. As the applied load shifted from tooth to shaft axis there will be moment also in equivalent system which I have mentioned already mentioned and uh, the dimension is PCR is 167.35 millimeter which is 0 0.16735 millimeter. So, there will be torque that torque is shown here, uh, but the moment due to this axis is also So, this is the bending moment is shown here F T 4 due to this um, vertical forces tangential force and their bearing reactions and there will be also bending moment due to the F A R and F R 4 in same plane all these are acting on this shaft and these two bending moments are in transverse plane we have to see this this and this not in the same plane. 
now consider only the force and outputs have force equilibrium we are considering. So, in that case clearly that th this three set of force at uh, the at the gear it is on the axis we this force we are considering it is acting on the axis of the shaft that is applied force F T R F R 4 and F A R 4 and um, also this is expressed in terms of F Y 4, F Z 4 and F X 4 and all are in the negative directions as seen in the left hand side top corner and then reaction force at left bearing vertical loads are there and as well as horizontal forces are there. These loads are being offered by the bearing to the shaft and in the right hand side there are three forces uh, one is horizontal direction, one is vertical directions and also axial their directions because axial load is being taken by the right bearing. Now, this is this plan view was in x z plane that is to show it and uh, now we will recapitulate how the equivalent load on the bearing is calculated because next we are going to calculate or going to estimate the lives of the bearing. So, first of all we will estimate the loads on the bearings and then we will estimate the life. So, first of all we should know what is the equivalent load acting on bearings that uh, already in uh, week 4 lecture we have described, but very briefly we will go on that that P is the equivalent load on a bearing where C 1 is a factor which depends on the nature of shock loads and V is the out race rotation factor 1 for fixed and 1.2 for rotating uh, outer race. Now, in this case our outer race is fixed. So, we will consider V is 1. So, uh, as well this equation can be considered as P is equal to C 1 into x F 4 plus y F A eliminating V terms totally. F R is the net radial load acting on bearing. This F r do not confuse this F r is now on the acting on the bearing which is uh, F for the force R for the radial direction. Similarly, F a is the net, net axial load acting on bearing and x is the radial load factor which to be taken from the catalog while we are choosing the bearing and y is axial load factor which is also from the catalog. Now, first of all we will consider the left bearing. On the left bearing the slide is on x y plane. Now, we have considered this side is on the x y plane that means, we have considered the vertical plane and bearing also we have considered in the vertical plane because um, this will be easy to visualize that how the loads are acting. Now, this elevation of the output sap left bearing is on the plane of x y plane. Okay. So, in that plane the load acting on the shaft which we have shown earlier. So, on the bearing the loads will be opposite on bearing the load the one load is acting in downward directions this is in along the y axis and it is the negative sign as it is acting in the negative directions and this is B stands for bearing load and the horizontal load is acting in the z directions this is also negative negative z directions. Now, we have chosen a bearing a one size higher than the intermediate shaft. Uh, I, I already shown I have already shown that the, uh, the selected bearing 
is having life in, in the intermediate set having life more than 20 hours which is double what we are expecting probably there it could be taken the bearing 6308 that means 40 millimeter dia bearing inside dia bearing and probably here we could take the 6309 45 millimeter bearing. Okay. Now, there are two issues one is the bearing life in some cases we may find whatever bearing we are using in the intermediate shaft the same bearing can be used for output shaft also because in output shaft the uh, rpm reduce very much because usually in the second stage ratio will be more than 4.55 in normal cases maybe 6 or even more so speed will be reduced although load is increasing but that load what is coming on the shaft that load is nothing but what is the load on pinion on the intermediate shaft only direction will be opposite. But usually in usual practice you will find the bearing of the output shaft is one size higher than at least one size higher than the intermediate shaft Maybe series is different the main reason is that we need more shaft diameter there to transmit the torque because it is not usually taken the alloy steel usually it is taken off mid medium carbon steel to reduce the cost. However, in this case we have taken 6310 that means shaft diameter is 50 millimeter here it is shown and for which this ball bearing the x factor radial load factor is 1 however axial load factor is 1.6 and the direction of rotation is shown here now um, outer race for this left bearing this is not axially locked with the housing it is axially locked with the shaft but not axially locked with the housing because there the radial load is high. So, this housing is fitted with light drive fit here I would like to mention the other end also it is with the light drive fit, but it is constant to move in axial directions. Anyway this light drive fit why we have chosen because with the increase in uh, temperature there will be thermal expansion also in cold country after operation it will be cooled down there may have contraction of the shaft and then this bearing will move slightly right or left depending on the whether shaft is length is increasing or decreasing although the mine very small and uh, so that it can easily move that is why light drive fit it has been taken light drive fit. So, bearing will have no axial load at all and then directly we calculate the uh, equivalent load. Now, here in this calculation we have shown that first of all the race rotation factor is 1 and x factor which is taken from the catalog it is also 1 and the c 1 what we consider for the intermediate shaft 1.5 as it is there is a shock load medium shock load. So, we have taken it is 1.5, but remember while we can considering the gear design then we have taken that factor is 2 because of the reason it was having also initial starting torque higher starting torque, but that is very momentarily please note that for due to that momentary increased torque there will be also change in this radial loads it will be twice, but that is 
for a moment and if we would like to consider if you calculate with that load that means multiplying with 2 it is unnecessarily we have to go for large bearing. So, it is justified or it is I think there would be no harm there will be no effect on the life if we consider carefully here 1.5 factor, but there is no you, um, guideline detail guideline for selecting this factor. Anyway, here we have taken C 1 is equal to 1.5 and then F r this F r we have calculated as you see here that this is under root because this is the load in vertical plane on the bearing and this load is on the horizontal plane that is here if we calculate this is B y L and this is B z L and resultant of these two is giving the F r for the bearing calculation. So, we have considered this one and finally, this axial load is 0 we have taken axial load is equal to 0. And that load becomes 5474.5 Newton the equivalent load on the bearing. Okay. So, this is resultant radial load on bearing as we have already discussed. Now, next we will carry on the estimation of life. Now, life of the left bearing in number of revolution which is given by C by P to the power Q because this is ball bearing into 10 to the power that much million 10 to the power 6 revolutions. Now, in this case the dynamic load capacity of the bearing which is 10400 pounds and that is close to 4,637 uh, so, sorry 46,375 Newton 46,375 Newton. So, bearing life is calculated on that basis and what we find it is very high 607.86 into 10 to the power 6 revelation. But here, if we when we estimate the life of the bearing in hours, our output revolution is now 150 divided by 24.42 that is the total transmission ratio. So, this is n and this is in rpm. So, this is revolution per minute of the output shaft and so we multiply with 60 to revolution in hours and then we divide the um, life in revolution by that value to get this life as very high, very high. So, this bearing will not fail, but still I would like to say we can may have to be with this bearing because maybe we will require the sap diameter there. We will discuss uh, after one or two slides, but this life definitely this is highly satisfactory. However, we have to because the intermediate shaft is only 22 hours or so, but uh, we have decided after every 10, 10,000 hours we will go for overall. When we will go for overall, it is recommended that all the bearings to be replaced. Even if this bearing is, is having life, more life, it should be replaced because with worn out bearing and new bearing, the life will drastically fall. In 
of the new bearings. Only thing we can change the de, uh, this design and we can go for lower series bearing. We will see that later. Now, so equivalent load. So now we will consider the right hand side bearing, and in the right hand side bearing, the same bearing there is also axial load is acting. So this is what is the, the uh, this load what we have shown that is acting on the bearing. Okay. So this is having the vertical direction load, horizontal direction load and axial direction load. Okay. And this is the direction of rotation shown here and this is also shown that outer, uh, um, outer race is fixed to housing and constant fully to move axially under force. It cannot move any directions. Okay. Outer race cannot rotate also. Inner race is also locked to the sat. So, inner race can rotate as there are uh, balls, rollers are there, but it also cannot move in any direction as it is locked with sat and outer race is also locked. And therefore, the axial load is acting there and the equivalent load estimation what we have done. We have considered this resultant radial load, radial load to the bearing and here this V factor, here this X factor, here this C 1 factor and then we have considered Y from the catalog 1.6 and the axial load. In this case only the magnitudes are to be considered. Okay. Finally, we find this load is 4100.6 that is 4100 Newton that is acting on that bearing which is P equivalent load. Okay. Now, next in the life estimation of the bearing Again this we have considered the allowable dynamic load capacity, we have considered the equivalent load P and then it is 10 to the power 6 revolution. So, we get, so it is again higher than the left hand side bearing. Okay. And life in hours, as you see, that that has become very very high, and this is also satisfactory. Now uh, here, I would like to make some comments on this um, so far analysis on the output shaft. Uh, we have made. Now, it is to be noted that if the direction of rotation or the direction of helix angle are reversed, then the resultant load on bearing will be different although axial load taking bearing will have comparatively less load than the respective other end bearings. Okay. So, this means that if you change the direction of rotation, then um, moment due to the axial load will change. Although the for the same torque, the radial loads on bearings will remain same. This is one or else keeping the same direction of rotation. Now, if we change the helix direction of helix angle, in that case also it will be otherwise. So, if the bearing life is found to be less, it is very close to that what is being expected, then we should check for both, we should consider both cases and we should verify the life of the bearings. But in this case, 
as the lives are very high we need not calculate except if we consider the other series bearing bearing which I am mentioning here. So, it is apparent that lower size bearings or lower series bearing can be selected for both intermediate and output shaft. Here again I mention about the intermediate shaft. And however, the output shaft a design verification to be done before altering the bearings. If you would like to change the bearing at all, first of all we should verify the um, shaft capacity, shaft torque capacity and stresses on the shaft and then we should go for altering the bearing. This means now we should verify the design of the shaft. So, for that we will consider the shaft only and we will check that what is the load there. Now, here again what we have done the output shaft is now being viewed as elevation let it has been rotated by 270 degree in the direction of rotations what we have considered from the earlier view. The plane of this slide is now x y plane. Now, this shaft so far we are looking that keeping the shaft on the x y plane. Now, what we have done as if we are looking into looking in the vertical direction looking straight to the shaft and in that case as you see this key has come here here is also the key has come here. Anyway that is not that important, but now we can say that plan view of output shaft is in the z x z x plane plan view. Okay. But this is in the vertical plane. So, this is basically um, now the apply applied moment here this is being shown here this are the load and so this is the bearing reaction at the left hand bearing and this is the load at right hand bearing and direction of rotation is shaft is this one. and this is the applied torque and this is the reaction torque resistive torque that is from the coming from the coming from the coupling that means this is coupled to the machine for which we are uh, which we have made this gearbox so if you now look into this resistive torque and this torque in opposite directions all the forces are in opposite directions however Due this moment for due to this is taken by the couple which is added to these two forces. Okay. So, this is in the radial directions okay, in the z directions and um, this is actually not the I would like to mention here this is not the plan view this is elevation. and uh, this is in the yeah z x plane right this is the elevation view of output shaft okay so in this slides i have shown what are the total forces acting on the shaft total moments torque etc and now we will consider the these forces torque etcetera where whatever necessary in the in estimation the bending moment of the shaft and from there we will calculate uh, the stresses considering the torque also and uh, this outputs have design verification to be continued in the next lecture. Okay. So, so far 
we have again I repeat that we have developed the output shaft completely, we have developed the output shaft assembly completely and then we have calculated a what are the load acting on the bearings, we have estimated the life of the bearings and finally, we have considered what are the what are all forces acting on the shaft and shaft equilibrium. Okay. So, we have to continue in the next lecture. Thank you.